Hello, my name is Kai Northfield. I'm a paid volunteer from Utah. I got involved with Parents Against Vaping e-cigarettes when my daughter started vaping. And I found the information with this organization to be incredibly helpful. And I hope you do too. It's my honor to introduce Commissioner Noah Phillips of the Federal Trade Commission. After joining us last year at PAVE's inaugural conference, Commissioner Phillips will now update us about FTC's first ever report on e-cigarette sales and advertising. This report was released in March and it studied the enormous period of growth among flavored e-cigarettes between 2015 and 2018. Commissioner Phillips and his four colleagues on the commission have publicly expressed their commitment to protecting young people from these highly addictive flavored products. We appreciate the commissioner's leadership on this issue and look forward to hearing what next steps the commission may take. We hope you enjoy. I'm Noah Phillips, a member of the Federal Trade Commission. Thank you very much for having me here today. Parents Against Vaping E-Cigarettes has done exceptional work advocating and educating about the youth vaping epidemic. And so it is a privilege to be speaking with you for a second year in a row. Federal Trade Commissioners like me are supposed to say that the remarks that I give today are my own and do not reflect the views of the commission or my fellow commissioners. I wanna start by thanking Meredith Berkman in particular for participating in the Federal Trade Commission's open meeting in March and for providing her insightful remarks. The commission holds a monthly meeting that is open to the public. And in March, our staff presented its first report on the sales and marketing of e-cigarettes. Meredith provided public comment, sharing the backstory of PAVE and some marketing practices of flavored vape companies toward kids. As a law enforcement agency, the mandate of the FTC has been to protect American consumers from deceptive and unfair practices in commerce and unfair methods of competition. We are a small independent federal agency headed by a bipartisan group of five commissioners. Our work to protect consumers spans topics from the do not call registry to antitrust enforcement to privacy and identity protection. As originally conceived, the FTC is also a kind of think tank, a government agency charged by Congress with investigating and reporting on business practices. We have used this authority under Section B of the FTC Act, 6B, to study and report to the public on tobacco sales and marketing practices. The Commission has tracked cigarette sales and marketing since 1967 and has tracked the same data for smokeless tobacco since 1987. As I mentioned, this past March, we released our first report on e-cigarettes, which explored data we received for the years 2015 through 2018. This report originated in October 2019, when the commission began a 6B study on the sales, advertising, and promotional methods of the six largest e-cigarette manufacturers, Fontam, Juul, Logic, and Joy, Newmark, and RJ Reynolds. The e-cigarette report covers the years 2015 through 2018 and includes a number of notable data points that speak directly to PAVE's concern with marketing vapes to kids. One prominent finding of the e-cigarette report was the growth in domestic sales from calendar years 2015 through 2018. Domestic sales grew from 304 million to 2 billion, including increases in cartridge systems, nicotine concentration, other flavors, and advertising expenditures. Cartridge systems have grown from 260 million in 2015 to over 1.9 billion in 2018, far outselling disposable, non-refillable e-cigarette products. Cartridge systems represent the best-selling product for e-cigarette manufacturers. The data also reveal the large increases in the nicotine concentration of disposable e-cigarettes. Over the three-year span, the most popular cartridge systems have gone from 47.5 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter to between 51 and 61 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter. The health effects and addictiveness of nicotine are well documented, and I am very concerned about this metric in particular. Another area of notable growth was the flavor category. Other flavors, which consist of flavors not categorized in the report as tobacco or menthol, are reported by the commission to have tripled 
in just three years to 42% of sales or free samples. Over the same period, tobacco flavor cartridges dropped from 47% to 21%. The most popular other flavor category was fruit flavored cartridges, which represented 4.7% of all cartridges sold or given away in 2015 and 29.7% in 2018, a six fold increase. The second most popular other category was canning and dessert flavors. To the extent that children are enticed into vaping because of flavors, I find this very troubling. Lastly, as cartridge system sales, nicotine concentration, and other flavor offerings have increased, so too have advertising expenditures. Over the measured years, expenditures on advertising and promotion have tripled, 197 million to $643 million in 2018. That last number, 643 million has price discounts as one of its largest expenditure categories. These are the discounts offered by manufacturers to reduce the price of e-cigarette products paid by consumers. Since sampling was banned in 2016 by the FDA, companies have turned to offering e-cigarette products at highly discounted prices, such as $1. Companies reported to the FTC spending over 58 million in 2018 on sampling expenditures to underwrite these highly discounted prices. Much still remains to be discovered from more current data. The spending on procuring celebrity endorsers, social media influencers, and brand ambassadors is something that I am particularly interested to learn more about. Also, advertising expenditures on new media, such as TikTok and Instagram. This is why I am glad to inform you that the commission voted unanimously last year to authorize another 6B study of industry sales and marketing in 2019 and 2020. The 6B orders for information were issued to Juul, RJ Reynolds, Fontum, Logic, and Enjoy. The commission will continue its approach in reporting shifts in the e-cigarette and tobacco industries. Using data put into the public forum by the FTC, legislators, advocates like yourself and others can make informed decisions to protect the health of our nation and in particular, our children. I will close by encouraging you to read the report on the commission website, ftc.gov, and to keep your eyes out for our forthcoming report on the data collected from our most recent study. I hope the commission can bring the results of that study to the public soon. Thank you for your efforts and for your time. Have a nice day.